Hello, everyone, and welcome in. This is our second Hats for Harris Zoom meeting. My name is Kesley Anderson, and I will be answering you in the chat and sharing links in the chat. Um, I'm going to let Joy take it away from here. Go ahead, Joy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name's Joy McDonnell. I, Kesley and I are sisters. And um, we had a crazy idea this summer as we were watching everything happen um, with Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. We, we had been volunteers in 2017 with the Women's March, and we just felt like we need to get knitters together again and um, knit some things, but we wanted to knit a little bit differently this time. So uh, the patriotic hat sort of came to life while we were... Um, you know, talking to each other. So we're going to walk you guys through. We're doing a little knit along and knit with you. Oh, Joy, you just hit your mute. Hold on. Joy, you just lost your sound. I'm back. Right. It's because I okay. put my hat on. I won't do that again. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. But we just wanted to... Um, help everybody make hats and answer questions and be able to kind of walk you through the steps of how to make the patriotic hat. I see that we have people knitting, which is amazing because I think that just makes our hearts very happy. And um, Kez, is there a way to kind of get a feel for where everybody is on their project? Maybe there's a spot we should jump into. Do we have a lot of people who are just starting? Um, I see, yeah, they I see folks knitting. Everyone can definitely pop into the chat and let us know um, how where you know where you are in your project. But we want to go ahead while you're doing that. Why don't we, um, Joy, go ahead and get started? I think one of the questions I got was, are we starting from where we left off on our first Zoom meeting, or where are we going to start? So, um, Joy has a few in progress <laughs> stages <laughs> to get us started with. So Joy, I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight your um, overhead camera so you can go ahead in there. And if anybody who's got their camera on, do you guys see the chat message? Can you just give me a yes and a thumbs up or I don't see the chat? Oh, I see the chat. Okay, it's there. Sense. It's just not yes. showing up. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay. so. The hats for Harris. The um the the knitting itself is a rib stitch that we have along the bottom with a color change from red to white, and then a color change to the blue, and then some color work up in the blue so that we can get the stars. So um, if we have people who are just starting out, um, I see some folks who are knitting already, and I uh, just want to. Kind of, I don't want to start at the very, very beginning with casting on if we don't need to, but we are knitting in the round. And one of the questions that we that we have in the very beginning is, you know, some people have never knit in the round before, and so they're a little bit nervous about joining in the round. So I'll just cover that really quickly. The most important thing about joining in the round is making sure that your stitches are all facing in the same direction. Because when you join in the round, um, if you have one part of your knitting that's twisted, you'll end up with a little twist in your hat and then it won't end up in a circle. It'll kind of do like a, a weird thing on you. So this is the most important thing to do. And you can kind of see here that I just spread the stitches out along the knitting needle. We're using a size eight knitting needle. It's five millimeters and um, it is 16 inches long. So we have that. And then to join in the round, once you've got everything in the going the right way, I just pick it up and take, I, I like the, the join to be nice and tight. So I cast on one extra stitch, one more than the pattern calls for this particular pattern, depending on the size you're working on 116 or 92 stitches, you would add an extra stitch and then you'll take the last stitch on the right needle, which is actually the first one that you cast on and move that over to your left needle 
just slide that right on over. And then using your right needle, you take that extra stitch that you cast on and you're gonna lift it over the stitch that you just brought and off the needle. So it basically goes around the neck of that bottom stitch. And then I take my ends and just tighten them together. And what that does is it lets that, that cast on stitch hug the other one and it kind of looks the same as that purl stitch from previously. So it gives you a nice tight cast on and then put my stitch marker in place and I can get started. So from here, we're going right into a rib stitch. So you do your two knits, your two purls, and you'd keep right on going all the way around. And you're gonna do that for four rounds in the red in your rib stitching, knit two, purl two. And I have um, a baby version mm -hmm. so that we could so that we could work together and um, I wouldn't take too much time knitting around. But we have um, I've already done four rows in the rib pattern, and now we're ready to switch to another color. So to do this, you have your stitch marker. You're at the beginning of your round, and you would take that take that first stitch and slip it to your right needle. You don't knit it. And the reason we don't knit that stitch is because you want your rows to show clean from one, from like the red stitching to the white stitching. You don't want it to have a jump where you're attaching those stitches. You want it to be real nice and clean from, <clears throat> from one to the other. So you slip that first stitch and then I'll just pick up some blue because that's what I have right here. You would be using red, but I just fold it over my finger and slide it. Um, well, I'd go right into my stitch, sorry. Then slide it over my finger and onto the needle, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then you just go ahead and knit. Now, one of the questions my mom had, which I thought was a good question, she said, do you hold the ends together? And I do because that lets you get a little tight right there. And then go ahead and drop that tail. And this first round, you're going to knit all the way around. You're not gonna do your pattern. And the reason for that is because if you were to do a knit and a purl, your purl stitches would be forced to the front, which means that you would get this little bump right here on the front of your work. And you really want that on the back of your work. So you knit the first round in your new color, and then you come back and return to the pattern for two more rounds, and then you would switch again. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, so Joy, is the is that extra row of knitting? So just so you guys know, Joy is, um, our, our resident knitter and I just pretend at it. Um, <laughs> no. so I'm, getting, I'm getting much better at it. Um, but so I'm just curious, Joy, that, that stitch where you do the, um, where you're doing the, um, that white stitch all the way around, is that nor do you normally do that when you change colors on a pattern or is that unique to this project? You mean when you slip that first stitch? Yeah. Yeah, no, if you're gonna no, when not when you slip the first stitch, but when you do the um that whole row of knitting instead of doing the knit instead of doing the rib stitch, you're doing the knit stitch. Yes, if you're changing, row. yeah, if you're changing colors, mm -hmm. it's not uncommon to in your pattern for it to tell you if you're doing a rib stitch to do one row of knitting first. Mm -hmm. because because of that whole concept that you don't want that purl stitch to pop to the front of your work right. and to show because you 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 want that you want all those purl stitches falling in the back otherwise you'd end up with this row or like half of this row of a mix of blue and white on the front side instead of a nice clean switch to one color 
Okay, and this is where Joy is so much better than I am. I'm gonna show my camera um, because I'm trying to do this with you and, uh -huh. um, and I'm talking. So uh -huh. I can see right back here on my stitching, I did um, two purl stitches when I meant to do two knit stitches. So if that happens, if like, if it's just me on a Sunday afternoon and I'm knitting, I would just go, oops, and just keep going around because <laughs> that's something I wouldn't notice. But um, if you're new and you need to take out your mistake like that, I just go back in and I stick my needle into that back loop and then yeah. take it off the needle like that. And then just keep working my way back to my oops yeah. um, until I can fix that. So I just kind of like, just keep slipping, see now what I do there, slipping it off until I get it fixed up. Yep. And that's called frogging, Kez. No, that's called making a mistake. It's got a real name <laughs> on it. Like, so, so people do this in, often. It's got like a real name to it. Yes. In the knitting, in, in the knitting community, if you had to rip something back or take it back, you would say you were, you were frogging it, or maybe <laughs> you were tinking it back. So it's not uncommon. There are lots of people who have to, you know, you, you try something, you put something in and you're like, that just did not work. And you've just got to rip it back. So it's all part of the process, right? It's right. It is process. all part of the process. And so I just, I'm showing that to everybody because I don't want anybody, especially for our new, our beginner knitters, <laughs> like <laughs> it happens more often to me than I'd like, but mostly when I get distracted. All right, so yeah. take it away now. I'll take my spotlight off of my, <laughs> my boo boo no I like All the right. teamwork. <laughs> okay, so when you get to, um, when you come back around, you, you're you gonna hit that stitch that you slipped and you're just going to treat it as if it were knitted. So you'll just come in and knit and now you do your pattern. So then you're gonna knit two, and then you're gonna purl two, knit two, purl two, until you have um, two rounds of that completed. And then, so one thing that I that I wanna mention that I did not do, I did not cut the white yarn off. I left, I left it in place. And that's because I just pulled that yarn up to the row when I'm going to knit white again. And, and then that way, I don't have any ends that I have to weave in. I don't have extra things that I have to do. I just pull that yarn right up to that next row. It'll be two rows up. Let me show you on my finished hat. And trust me, I don't mind showing the inside of my work because I like the inside to be as nice as the outside. <laughs> so, and Kesley knows that's the thing about me. So here... Um, I just dropped that red and then pulled it up when I was ready for it and then pulled up the white and then pulled up the red again. And then I wove in the end. And sometimes something I think is really important about when you weave in your ends is to fray the end of your yarn. And when I say fray, I mean like just pull the plies apart because that will keep it from popping through to the front side of your work. So um, so that's kind of what the inside of my hat looks like. That looks awesome. <laughs> Kesley knows, so I used to sew when, when we were little, Kesley sews too, but um, I would sew a lot and I would make sure that I cut all my little ends and had no threads hanging anywhere. And then Kesley, Kesley and I are, Kesley's my younger sister. And uh, when she started sewing, like she said, she just kind of jump into it and all these threads would be hanging <laughs> all over the place. And I'd be trying to chase after her trimming her little threads and stuff. So I like the inside of my work to be nice and clean. Typical younger sister, chaos everywhere. <laughs> but that's that's what got us here. Honestly, that is the, the chaos that that we are got us to this point. And we're so excited to have you guys um, on the journey. If you're just learning how to knit or you were just, you know, looking for your your way to be involved, 
um, in this campaign cycle. I am so happy you guys are here and joining us and, and working on this because we really hope, uh, Joy and I, like in our secret corner of dreams, we really hope that this um, it gets people excited and reclaiming their, their patriotism. Um, and that's why we picked this particular design because we felt like we had kind of abandoned the American flag and we just didn't really know how to recapture that. I have a pair of running shoes um, and I've been wearing a similar design for the last like six years when I run the Army 10 miler and they have the American flag on them or well, they have a patriotic theme to them. And I was like, you know, that was my little reclaiming of my patriotism, but I wanted to do more. And so we're just excited to have you guys here along the journey and whether you're making the hats for yourself or for um, for another, a, a friend or something, um, you, maybe you wanna donate them so other people can, can have the hats who can't knit. Like, I, I just am excited to have you guys here on this journey with us. Yes. And Kez and I, um, as we've been talking about what we're doing here and making our videos and everything, um, we we have been talking about how do we how do we incur how how do we help get hats to the the march? And um, Kesley lives in Washington D.C. in the area, and so we thought if anybody wanted to donate hats we can help to collect those hats and um i live in i live in dallas texas but i will be going up to uh, <laughs> dc for the march <laughs> if kesley will have me and we would love to help distribute the hats that's kind of how we volunteered last in 2017 and um so if we have people who are interested in making hats and donating them we would be will be a collection point for those hats and um, I just, I remember so vividly when we were distributing those hats, the, the notes that people wrote, they attached notes to their hats and the people who got those hats and wore those hats, they, um, they got to, they kind of got that personal touch from the person who knitted. And um, I think they felt really proud to wear their hats that day. So, so we just want to kind of, duplicate that for this year and see how we can help. And um, we will be polling people and finding ways to help connect you with um, distribution points and how you can mail hats to us for us to distribute as well. Yeah. So we, we're still that that's, we figured we needed to get everybody to learn how to knit and get their, get their, like I saw somebody um, on Pantsuit Nation said uh, that they, they thought this pattern the, in the crochet version, they're like, oh, I'm so excited to do this. It's going to bring back my Crojo. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I never heard of that Crojo. Um, their croquet, cro, cro, crochet mojo. And um, <laughs> so anyway, so like I, th that's why we sort of started so early because I do feel like the knitting part of it, maybe somebody who doesn't, hasn't, done knitting in a while or they don't know how to knit but it's something they've wanted to learn how to do this was a great project because it really we're hoping that since it's a patriotic theme hat that it really can appeal to a wide audience of people and then we do have ideas mulling around about um how to add more hats so if someone's like well I don't want to wear that hat but I'd wear it if it were this you know how we can help make additional styles of the hat um, and really branch out a bit. But we had to get this going first. So, we're getting it. Yeah, we're like, we're so I'm excited. I'm getting ahead of myself. If anybody um, wants to comment and, and add their little tidbit of why they're working on this project or what this might mean to them, I think you can raise your hand and I'd be happy to unmute you. And, and you can kind of share a little bit about, you know, what brought you to this project if anybody wants to just so because part another part of it is I think since um COVID we all feel oops I dropped my stitch there we all feel a oops. little bit I know oops I dropped a stitch <laughs> um, we, we all feel a little bit um disconnected 
And so I don't know about you guys, but for me, I'm hoping this will help bring the community together. Lots of hopes and dreams, right, Joy? Yeah, we have tons. I know. All right. So where where are you in your process now? Are you ready for the next step? Or are you still doing the the brim? Oh, me? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So does it's everybody understand how that color comes up? I was just getting ready to show it one more time. I just kept knitting around. Um, so if everybody's comfortable, I'll just I'll just knit myself really fast to that spot. And then um, I can show you how I bring that color up. And, and then we can go over to um, play with some color work. Actually, yeah, so you know, can you explain for those, for those um, not familiar with the knit lingo, what color work means? Yes. So let me show, let me show first how we bring that color up. Okay, so now I've knit a couple of rows and I'm ready to, to transfer back to the white. So what I would do, I have both colors just kind of hanging out here. I would slip my first stitch, slip that first stitch, and then just go down and grab that white. And you wanna make sure you're working with your working yarn, not your tail. Just pick up that white. And I don't worry that it has um, like a little distance away. That doesn't bother me at all. So I just kind of spread out those stitches and then just go ahead and start, start knitting. And that is a knitting round. Whenever you change your color, it's a knitting round. And then you can just go right ahead and keep on going. So that's that's how the color the color change kind of happens over here. And that slipping that stitch allows the, this blue will end up down on this bottom row. And so it'll make it even. It might look uneven when you first start it, but it will even out and work properly. Up to your camera, Joy, so so everyone can see kind of what you're doing. There yeah, you go. is that better? So when when you come back around again, this stitch, this blue stitch that's up here on the needle, will drop down and it will even out with everything else, and then it will look even in your colors. So your colors will change really, really nicely. So once, so is it? three rows so you do the full knitting stitch around and then is it three additional rows just two rows two rows okay but the first red one we did three is that right yes because it um it doesn't have that knitting row so you're okay. technically going to have three one is knit and then two are in the pattern okay so Does that makes sense let me just let me just show you mine again you tell me if i'm doing this right okay so right here, like I have, I did three rows. I, you know, I may have done four. I may have gotten carried away. I see. And one, it's okay. Two. It it there's no right or wrong. This is the thing about this pattern. It's okay. You do four rows here. Just do four rows there, or do do whatever turns gonna, out. I think I'm just gonna bring the red in now. <laughs> that sounds good. You guys, I'm a mess. Okay. <laughs> this is why Joy. This is why Joy the pattern. And it was, <laughs> and, uh, and everything because I just make it up as I go along. Okay, are you on your overhead? Yes. So, um, so I actually had gotten us into a spot <laughs> where I could have shown that little transfer again. So that's that transfer of color that that happens. But um, I'm happy to show some color work knitting. I just need to get us. Well, we'll just start from right here. We'll just. Okay. We'll just go red and blue and pretend it's blue and white because it's really about how you do it more than anything else. So I would still um, slip that one stitch. And when you're doing color work, it's all knitting. Okay, so I have my blue. And actually, let's just not skip that stitch just, just this time. So I, all right, we can also talk about how you hold your yarn. Everybody's different. I um I hold my yarn in my right hand and I do something called, I think it's called throwing, where I put my knitting needle in and I go across the needle and then I knit. Some people will hold the yarn in their left hand 
And I believe this is called continental stitching where you knit and then you're sort of just tucking that yarn under the needle and then going along. It Continental is probably a little bit more efficient, but there's no right or wrong in how you're doing it. And then um, there's also the good old fashioned, just you're learning and you don't know how to hold the yarn in your hands at all. And you just wanna pick it up and spin it around the needle and get that stitch done. That is fine too. So no matter how you hold the yarn, I'm gonna show you how to do your color work. Okay, so we're gonna hop kind of into the center of this. Um, well, actually let's go back one because it's technically, the pattern is you would do three blue and then one white. So we're right here at the white. And if this is the first time you're putting the white in, you would just put your needle in as if to knit. Hey, Joyce, and Joyce, yes. can, I, can I back you up for just a second? So you're yes. starting the, the blue portion of the hat, which is what stitch is that done in? It's just knit. Is it all knit or is it knit and purl? No, it's all knit. So when you okay. get it to the blue, it's stockinette stitch, which is all knitting in the round. Okay. You purl. just knit, 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 knit. No purling. No more purling. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to bring up the white and just do it with the, with the red. So if it's a brand new color, you just put it in just like you did previously, hold your two ends together and give yourself a knit. And then you're gonna switch back to your other color. So now here's where you have some thread um, things to pay attention to when you're doing color work. So color work, Kesley, you asked me this question. Color work is when you're working with two colors and you're floating one color behind the other. So you're you're holding the two colors and knitting along. And you wanna make sure that your tension is pretty loose with the color that you're floating. If you pull it too tight, it will pucker your work. So if you see your work kind of ending with these indents in it, loosen up, make your, just let go of the death grip. You can <laughs> kind of let your fingers just be more casual. I think the, um, the little, the hearts look better the looser that white thread is personally. Yes. The looser you can get it, the more they kind of pop out. So, okay. So now I've got the red that was there before and I've got the white. The red is my dominant color in this one, but in yours, it'll be blue. Your blue is your dominant color. So you want your blue color, your blue thread to be on the top and your white to be underneath. And you'll see what I'm talking about as I start knitting here. And I'm gonna, just gonna drop the tail, accidentally knit with it. So now when I pick up my red to start knitting, I'm gonna make sure that it goes over the top of the white, okay? So when I make that stitch, the white is down and the red just goes across. And I wanna keep that red on the top and the white on the bottom. Because if I change that up, your stitches will look a little bit different and your color will pop through a little bit differently. So it won't look even. Okay, so now we're ready for a white stitch. I did three, pretend it's blue. I did three, now the white. So I just go ahead as if to knit. And then I take the white and I spread these out a little bit. I pick up my white and I just do a knit stitch. And then I drop it down. And if it, if it, you know, pulls a little bit there, that's fine. I drop it down and I pick up the red. And then I do some, the next color. And that's gonna be three. Do three of those stitches. And then you would pick up your white again. And then that's just, you just keep going around the circle that way, keeping your tension pretty loose. So now here are some different ways that you can hold your yarn. I'll just show you how I do it. I hold the red yarn in one hand. I'm gonna get these untwisted. I hold the red yarn 
in one hand and I do a twist over my pinky finger and then I lace it through my other fingers and then kind of still twist it one more time to get enough tension. And I do the same thing over here on my left. Now this took, I'm not gonna tell you it was overnight. This took a lot of practice and it oh. took a lot of um, tears. <laughs> But I don't be afraid. Same, I hold them in the same hand. I'm going to show all the different ways. So okay. this is what I do. And I knit this way, kind of throwing and continental. Right. So I do that. You're a ninja. I don't, it just, this is just what felt comfortable to me. Okay. So now if you are, if you like to hold your yarn in one hand, like Kesley does, you can just hold it all on one side and you can do your, your I'm not good at this. Kesley's very good at this. You mm -hmm. can do your knitting with the one color. And then when you get ready, you can switch over to your other color. <laughs> you see, this is how you have to practice. You, you'll be good at one thing and not so good at a different way. So you can hold it all in, in your left hand. A lot of crocheters do this, or you can hold it in your right hand, just one color. You can hold everything over in your right. Some people wear, there are these rings that you can wear mm. that help keep the colors separate. Um, I still would wanna keep my tension. So I would, I would make a mess. I don't know that I can do it. I don't think I can. So I would go this way, one red, two red. Oh, I could do it. <laughs> Three red, and then one white. But I think that's kind of the same as how I was doing before. But you just gotta play around and see how it's comfortable in your hands. I don't think there's anything wrong with pick up, pick up one, pick up the other. The trick is really making sure that the white is under your red. So in, in this example, you can see my white travels the same way all the time. And that's what you really want. And then that, that will make an even fabric. What do you mean it travels the same way all the time? What does that mean? It, so it travels, I'm it travels under. So if, if I were, let's just say I was going along, right. And I, um, I put the white over the red, then um, my yarn is going to have a little, a little pull and a little jog where I do that. So then let's just say I don't pay any attention and I do it this way. Then you're going to get these little bumps under here. It won't travel evenly in a straight line. It'll kind of go up, down, up, down. Okay, if so it's your first time and it goes up and down, who cares? But if you really do want to know how to do the color work knitting and you do, you want to understand why that color dominance is important, that's why. You just, because if he, if I were to pull these around, my stitches would get a little crooked instead of being even. Gotcha. So it does affect the outside of it. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I know because it's a, you know, I know. The inside of my like. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying say. it doesn't matter if, if, if you just want to get there and get three blue and one white and you're like, yay me, I did that. I'm going to cheer you on 100%. Yeah. But if you, if you are, if you want to go further with color work knitting, it's a good habit to get into. There you go. That's all. There you go. Okay, so so count us off again. How do you do that? Your uh, color work? Oh, you're going to do three blue and then one white. Okay. And you just want to make sure that you're pulling that white from underneath. So Joy, when we, on our last, on our first meeting, we when we did our cast on stitches, um, we did 92 plus that extra one just to get it over. But like, what if you're, and I know this is like a whole math thing because I'm sure that those three and ones will make, will play into 
Um, how, yeah. if you need to, what if, what do you do if you need to make a bigger hat for somebody or a smaller hat for somebody? How do oh. you adjust your numbers for that? That is such a good question. You add or subtract in fours. So this pattern is a four stitch repeat. And so if you look down, so is your knit two purl two. Your knit two purl two is a four pattern repeat. And your knit three in one color and then white is a four pattern repeat. So if you wanna make the hat a little bit bigger, and I did do that, let me show you. I did that on this one. I was playing around. This is when I was writing the pattern. I had to go with all the different colors, but um, this hat ended up bigger than the other one. And I was like, oh, this is not my size hat. But if I look at it, I can even see it was a total of eight stitches, four on this side, four on this side, eight mm -hmm. stitches bigger than the size that I ended up with. And that's, um, so if you, if you finish your hat and you feel like, Ooh, it could be a little bit bigger, you could go up by four stitches or you could go up by eight stitches. And if you finish your hat and you say, Ooh, it could be a little bit smaller, reduce by four stitches or eight stitches. You just want to stay in a, in a multiple of four. Okay. So it doesn't matter four or eight, just at least four. Four. Yes. It needs okay. to be four because then you can get your knit two, purl two, and then you can get your color work in three of one of blue and then one of white. Gotcha. And, and that doesn't affect how, so obviously then when you're coming around and doing that, like your ribbing, like I'm working on my ribbing. So if I added two, I would end up with two knits next to each other. That's why I have to do four. So I do two knits and two pearls. You got it. Exactly. That's exactly. It's just a, um, it's a repeating pattern. So when you come back to the beginning and you're getting ready for your next row, you want to start, you, you don't want what's behind to be the same as what's in front. Got so it. that's just, that's, and it's easy with 92 and 116, those were good numbers divisible by four that work in the pattern, but size up, size down, just go by fours. And gotcha. the other thing is you, if you felt like, Ooh, this hat is a little bit, just a smidgy bit too big. You can always take down your needle size too. And changing your needle size, you can keep your stitches the same amount, but go from a size eight needle to a size seven needle. And that will make everything a little tighter and a little smaller. So you can play with your needle size. You can play with the amount of stitches that you have. That's the cool thing about knitting. And that's the cool thing about making a fabric because when you're knitting, that's really what you're doing. You're making your own fabric and you're doing it in a three dimension. So you're, you're just playing with those knit stitches, those purl stitches. You're playing with your gauge, which is the size of your yarn and the size of your needle. That's how it yeah, all. So what if I have, um, if my yarn is a thicker yarn or a thinner yarn, okay, do I need to adjust the pattern for that? Yes, you would. So here's where you can get into a little bit more math. Um, you want to do a gauge swatch. <laughs> Kesley does not love that. Um, but hey, you want to. <laughs> you too much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you want to. Um, you want to knit a little four by four square so that you can see how many stitches you have in an inch, and that's going to tell you how big your fabric's going to be. So if so on this one, if I go to measure it, I have one, two, three, four, five stitches in an inch. And let's say my hat needs to be 23 inches and I don't have a calculator. I would multiply 23 inches times five because I've gone around the circumference of my head to say my head is 23 inches. So 23 times five would be whatever it is. And then you would want to divide that by four. And, and if it doesn't divide evenly by four, you'll add a couple of stitches or reduce a couple of stitches to get it divisible by four. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, that makes sense. A little pattern math. 
I know. Well, because, you know, if, if people are making, have other family members they want to make hats for, like, I know I have family members who are already like, make me a hat. Um, my yep. husband being one of them and he's got a big head. So I'm like, how do I adjust this pattern for his head other yeah. than just eyeballing it going? I think it just needs this much. So yeah, and that's also, the way you would do it. This is a good um, stash buster. So if you have, yes. have, you know, other yarns, you can, you can use those. Yes, definitely. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to cover tonight, Kez, yeah. is how to seam up your hat. So, oh, and there's, there's, there's different ways that you can do this. You could do this with a three needle bind off you. Um, but personally, I like the Kitchener stitch. A lot of people are afraid of doing a Kitchener stitch, but I think if we challenge ourselves, we can do it. It's not too hard. And this is a great pattern to learn and to practice with. Um, the Kitchener stitch allows you to, it, this is where my seam is and um, my stitching just go, it looks like it just goes from the brim all the way around to the other side. Like there's not a seam in here. And that I think lets the, the top of the hat sit nicely on your head and lets the ears pop out. So mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a three needle bind off, which would give you a seam across the top. So. Let's practice the Kitchener stitch. And I don't think anybody should be afraid of it. I don't know how the, I don't know how people got afraid of it, but um, it's just a little bit of weaving. So you want to figure out, you want to leave yourself about 36 inches of um, waist yarn to be able to do the Kitchener stitch. So I just kind of eyeball about three times this width that I have. And then I might give myself a little bit extra because I'll get nervous. And then, but the, the good news is that if you cut your yarn too short, um, you can you can just get another piece and sew it back in. No big deal. All right. So um, I have my needle here and I just take my yarn and slide it over the base of the needle and then pinch it. And that gives me a good uh, piece that I can thread through the eye really easily rather than trying to just stick the end through there because that would be hard. Okay, so there's no, if you <clears throat> if you have done the Kitchener stitch before, there's no setup round when we're doing this. We're just gonna go right into the Kitchener stitch. And there's a little uh, rhyme that you can use to help you remember. So I've got my tapestry needle and I'm going to work with the front needle and the back needle. I'm not worrying about whether my stitches are evenly separated or anything yet. I'm just going to take my two needles and put them next to each other. And I'm going to work off of this front needle first. Hey, Joy, so before, I'm, you, before you get going on that, I have, a, I have a question. Because like, so when we do this on these hats, we'll have our white thread. And so what... Yeah. Like, where has that gone? You just, you cut that white thread off and we're going to weave in those, the end of the white thread. Okay. At the very end. So it'll just be a tail for a little while and then you'll weave it in. Okay. I just want to make sure. Good I question. It. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Cause you're like, we just forgot about that. So this is going to be your blue yarn. And we're working with that front needle. We're gonna go into the first stitch as if to knit. And that means that I'm just using my tapestry needle like I would a knitting needle. I'm gonna go in like I would knit and I'm just gonna take that, that stitch off the needle. I'm gonna leave my next stitch on the needle. I'm gonna go through that one as if to purl. So the way I remember it, and I pull my yarn all the way through. So the way I remember it is I go knit, purl and then I go to the back needle and I pick up where I left off. So I'm going to go purl, slide that one off, knit, pull my yarn through. And you want to make sure that your yarn is staying under your knitting needles. You don't want it to hop on top. <laughs> 
So you just kind of give that a pull and I fiddle with it a little bit to, to kind of get it aligned the way I want it. And then I go knit, slide off, purl. Thread my yarn through. Give it a little wiggle. Then I'm starting where I left off. Purl, slide off, off knit. Slide my yarn through. And that's all you have to remember. And I don't know if you can see it, but already I'm getting two little knit stitches. All right, so you just keep wiggling it. Knit, purl, pull your yarn through, wiggle, wiggle, purl, knit. That's it. Easy peasy. Pull your yarn through. Now, if you get distracted, the mailman comes, the phone rings, whatever it is, you're like, oh my gosh. Package arrives. Yeah, something exciting happens and you put your knitting down and you say, you come back to it and you're like, oh no, where and was I knitting? Was I purling? Was I on the front? Was I on the back? Where the heck was I? So I just look at where did where did the yarn end up? The yarn is on my back needle. So that means I'm on my front needles. If my yarn, so let me do this one, knit, slide off, purl. If I had just done this, my yarn would be on my front needle, would be up here. And I'd say, oh, okay, I'm on the back. No big deal. No worries. Purl, knit. Bingo, I got it. I'm right back where I was. And then you just keep on going. And you go all the way down to the end. Now you're going to ask me, Joy, what happens when all my stitches, like my needles are hard to get my stitches up there? How do I know where, where's what's going on? You would count however many stitches you have left and divide it in half. And wherever that halfway point is, you reach down and get that round cable and you just pull that cable in between those, bend it, pinch it, pull it, and you just pull it up through those stitches and that will give you your half and half. And then you just keep on going. Knit, purl, knit off, purl on, pull your yarn through. And with this yarn, you can give it a pretty good tug. Pearl, knit. Give it a good tug. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I think I so. so. I know it's funny, isn't it? Like you're like, people are nodding their head. Yep, I got that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And see. I think, yeah, the Kitchener stitch will be your friend after this. And it's, it's got a funny little story about it. Um, I was kind of, I was telling my mom recently about it and to figure out whether it was World War II or World War I. But I think we did, I think she told me it was World War II. I'm horrible at history. I apologize. Not good at math, not good at history, but I'm really good at knitting. <laughs> so, um, so in World War II, they asked women who were at home if they could knit socks for the soldiers. But the way that the yarn was being cast on, it was creating kind of a lumpy toe. And there was a general, <clears throat> and, and the men were getting trench foot. So there was a general in the, in the military, I don't know which branch, whose name was General Kitchener. And he figured out how to do this stitch so that um, when the socks were being handmade, they they had a nice even toe in the in the top. So it's something that um, is very patriotic in a way. And it matches, it's a good thing to do with this hat and, and to think about how people have served our country how they fought for our freedom and our independence. 
and how everybody has done something. Michelle Obama, when she did her um, speech at the DNC, I just was so moved by the fact that she said, do something. And so this gives us something to do. Or do something. Well, Joy, I just want to do, before we um, close off for the night, um, if anybody, give everybody a chance, if you had a question, please drop it in the um, in the chat real quick so we can answer that for you if you had a question. I did drop two links in the chat and we'll include this in the notes for the recording um, of future Zoom meetings. And we've got something different planned for each one. These first two, we really wanted to make sure everybody understood how to do the knit. Our next one is Thursday, August 29th, and that will be our crochet pattern. So if you want to do both knit and crochet, please join us. Um, and then after that, we'll probably merge the two crochet and knitting so that the we'll talk to both of them and that our community can just continue to grow. Um, also, if you, I put a link to the playlist that Joyce created on her YouTube channel for her videos uh, with all the knitting hats for Harris. So um, if you want to check that out and give her a follow on YouTube, because we'll be posting all the videos um, on her channel and she posts a new one, you'll get an update that she's got it. So anybody who's been working on their crochet tonight, I have the um, cam my uh, thing in gallery view. And I'd love to snap a picture of everybody um, holding up your knitting, however far you got however much you've done. If anybody wants oh. to um, share their, let's see, how do I do this? I think I have to do full screen, is that right? There we go. All right, so if everybody wants to like hold up their um, knitting, if you can, and I'll just take a quick screenshot of it, if I can do that. <laughs> do two at once, Kez. <laughs> I know, I'm like, mm. okay, I need, that's why I need somebody else to do that for me. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I love it. Kristen, yours looks great. Laura, you were knitting away. So I can't wait to see it. Oh, look at how cute is that? You oh, guys are doing so well. Let me, wait. Oh, sorry. You, I, I, Go ahead and unmute yourself, Laura. Oh, it's, this is something else. I don't have red yarn yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that looks adorable. And Kristen, how are you doing? You want to unmute and let us know? Oh, hi. Yeah, doing well. I'm enjoying this, learning some new techniques. I love it. That is good. Awesome. It looks so good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So as we as we continue to grow, we want to do our sharing moment at the end of each of the Zooms so we can all kind of see how we're progressing. And I mean, it's, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself, even though I might look a mess. It's kind of coming along cute. Um, all right. Well, guys, have a fabulous e evening. Continue to work on reclaiming our uh, symbols and getting out the vote. Um, all of it is so important and, and you guys all know that and I really appreciate you all being here. So have a great evening, everybody. And we will certainly see you um, in a future meeting. Thanks all. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Have a great night. All right.